Hello sporting fans, welcome back to Banter with the Boys. I'm Nick Rabinovitz. Big week of sporting highlights, guys. Let's start with Formula One, where driver Lewis Hamilton has announced that he will be breaking up with Mercedes to drive for Ferrari in 2025. Finally, Toto Wolff understands why Lewis was spending all that time on Duolingo, learning Italian. It seems Lewis has decided to end his career by going up in a puff of engine smoke and with his tires on backwards. Six Nations Rugby starts this weekend, what Europeans call the best rugby competition in the world and what South Africans call one World Cup semi-finalists, four teams still whinging about the ref and Italy. Bafana Bafana achieved the impossible on Saturday by taking out tournament's favorites Morocco in the round of 16 at AFCON, setting up a quarterfinal clash with the Blue Sharks of Cape Verde. If Bafana Bafana win, they'll find themselves enjoying the most unexpected semi the Tim Henman, the most unexpected semi since 1992 when I watched Sharon Stone in Basic Instinct as a teenager. And on that uplifting note, let's cross our legs over to the studio. Right behind me. Welcome back everybody. It's so hot in Cape Town right now that Afrikaans Catholics are calling it Vadim. <laughs> as steamy as the weather in Paul, to my right, it's not the virgin act of sauna, it's Jean de Villiers. Woo! Go on. And, uh, I, was, I was in the virgin act of this morning. Good. And with the act of... And to my left, uh, it's not a T-bone, it's a T-bow. Hi Chris Morris, we, we try to include you as well. Thank you. T-bow, Tim T-bow. It's always nice to come to Cape Town and get free food. Yeah, you do like those chips. These forage chips. Yeah. It's my, it's honestly, when I know I'm coming to Cape Town, <coughs> it's like my, my third vice when I come in. I'm, chips. I'm always confused. Does white make you look thinner or does black make you look thinner? The double, e the extra X on the shirt makes me look thinner. Okay. Yeah, because it used to be a, it used to be a very, very streamlined, large shirt because of length, you know, and also had a long torso. And then the extra X just makes the shirt hang better on my man boobs, moobs. Right, I also love the fact that you are honoring your German Australian heritage by wearing your Western Australia t-shirt. <laughs> Western. Um, I have to say I'm delighted to be back with you guys. What a joy it is to be here with you and later on to be joined by the world's, arguably the world's greatest wicketkeeper batsman of all time, Mark Boucher. But first, you guys have been pretty busy since we last spoke. Uh, Chris, you've been commentating at the Betway SA20. How was the game last night? I heard you wanted to get an early night, but some ginger <laughs> got 115. <laughs> quote, so, unquote. Uh, that's a quote from you, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, early night would have been wonderful last night because I had a very early flight coming to Cape Town. The big game, that. The second capital of Pretoria. Um, very big game. It was a good game. Um, my Cape Town decided that to pitch up in Centurion and do what they should have been doing all time. 248. 243. 40, 243 remember. in 20 hours. 40, 48, you're right. You were watching. I wasn't. I was uh, there, but I was there. It wasn't there. Um, yeah, hell of a game. Um, Capitals got into quite a bit of cuck early on. So that's when, hence, the early night came across. And I thought, hell of a, hell of a script. But yeah, Scalzi, Verona, what a beauty. <laughs> Did you not mention in your intro the semi? Yes, the, the unbelievable win at AFCON. Bafana Bafana, did you watch? No. No. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I, thought you, no I thought you were talking about his semi. But uh, Beating Morocco, tournament favourites. How good is this meme, Jean de Villiers? Somebody's saying, going to tell my kids this was Rassi. 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 <laughs> That's just wrong. But That's it's really, actually, if you think about it, um, if you think about it historically. Uncanny there. Uh, of course, uh, Hugo Bruce, actually, our Bruce, coach. Bruce, Bruce. Uh, and if you think about it, a Dutch guy from Belgium, and it's really gone full circle for us as a country. If you think about it, the Dutch, uh, a Dutch guy made a mess here in 1652, <laughs> and a Dutch guy has come to fix it in yeah. 2024. So, so long live Hugo Bruce, who's actually Belgian, but Belgian Dutch. It's complicated. But, but his, his, his speech, his, uh, his pre-game motivational speech was amazing because he actually brought Spa into it, which is a Dutch company originally. It was called DESPA, which is an acronym uh, for which is actually what he told Bafana. Through United Corporation, everybody scores. And, and two, guys, uh, two guys actually did. But big week uh, for the, the Betway SA20 coming up. Playoffs, 
And a uh, very complicated, who gets to the, there's a sort of complicated formula. It's not. Uh, who's your money, who's your money on? Uh, obviously, you're going to go with your beloved. I obviously love the Paul Royals. Um, they're going through a bit of a slump at the moment. Mm. Peaked a bit early. DSG, how, imp how impressive have they been the last couple of games? I mean, Britsky. Bretsky. How do we pronounce his name? Bretsky. 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 I, I played a season with him at uh, the leagues before this one, before the Betway, and his, the Betway SA20 started. Um, and yeah, I, I used to call him Bretska, Bretska, because Bretska, I went to yeah. school with the Bretska. Yeah. And eventually asked me, said, Murray, why do you keep calling me Bretska? I told him why, and he said, no, please, that's Bretsky. Get it Bretsky. right. So sorry. Oh, sorry, that's mate. like my friend but Van Wick, because they moved to London, and I was like, this is Van Wick. <laughs> Lucas Radiby. Lucas Radiby. 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 But, but DSG, I mean, he's impressive. Klaassen must be one of the best players in world. Classy. Cricket. Classy. Yeah. What a classy player. Yeah. Right? But he must be one of the he's, best in the world. Apart from, apart from just the best in the world, I think he's the best player of spin in the world. I don't think I've ever seen anybody play spin as well as he does, apart from Abram Benjamin, De Villiers. He is honestly, in my opinion, that he plays spin the best I've ever seen. Yeah. So his feet are good. Uh, he learned it at the Titans just before um, Bouch got there. So Bouch can't claim him, but yeah, he was. We'll get his very Can he good. play the Honest of Boer Viejo? That's <laughs> the question. Honest of Boer Biesem. Biesem Viejo. Biesem Viejo. Let's talk Six Nations. Uh, coming up this weekend, Ireland, France, and of course the Box and the All Blacks are, are missing from the Six Nations, which means other people can be included and participate. Uh, predictions for Six Nations? I find it difficult to look past Ireland because obviously they, they've lost a few players, but I, it's difficult to look past their team because I think their structure is very good and they're quite passionate. I'm, I'm balls deep into the, net, in the, doc, in the Netflix documentary. Really? Balls deep into like the Six Nations. Like a beer on debut. Correct. So I, 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 I really love, like the Italians. I like the way things happen. There's a lot of South Africans, a lot of Welshmen playing for Italy. It's basically um, the Dutch cricket team with a lot of foreigners making one team. but. I like them, but like I say, I've watched the documentary, I've seen what goes on behind the scenes, I get a glimpse of it, and it's difficult to look past Ireland. They're just big people, aren't they? They're big. The big French people. are bigger. They are big men, eh? The French are even bigger with the, with the squad that they have. They've got that, that young Twi'alagi that's now uh, brought into the squad as well. 140 odd kgs at lock, 19 years old. Can you ever count out the Poms? Yes. Can you ever? Yes. Why? Well, we, they were counted out of the World Cup and look what they did. Yeah, they didn't win. Or oh, they got to the semis and unexpected. They got a Tim Henman. Like, but, yeah. That's the saying, thing. But for, can you for, ever... for some people, like making a semi is good enough. Ouch. All right. Well, that's, I think, enough about rugby. Our Indian fans couldn't give a f So, it's over to the long tail. That's what's up next, where we'll be joined by Mr. 555 himself, the man with the most dismissals as a test keeper, Mark Boucher. But in the interim, let's take a look at the latest installment of Fans in the Stands. Welcome back, everybody, to episode three of Fans in the Stands. Today we are at Centurion, home of Pretoria Capitals. Let's go talk to some fans and see how their day is going. <laughs> if someone comes from Cape Town, where are you taking them for a good time in Pretoria? Well, if you're Afrikaans, we'll definitely take you to Buffelsfontein Beers Boerderij because they have the best Afrikaans food. And um, yeah. What about the strip? What do you think about the strip? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know the strip. Yeah. Okay. So the Drickus, the world champ, lives in Pretoria. If you had to take on anyone in the SA20 teams, who would who would have the best chance against him? Uh, Riley Rousseau. He's pretty big. So it's just because he's big, not because he has anything fighting, nothing. Nah, I think he's got some power behind him. Is it because of his batting? Because he hits some massive sixes. Exactly. Yeah. So. I know you can't catch the Betway 2 million catch, but where are you sitting and do you think you have a chance of catching it? Uh, we're sitting on the grass, I'm not sure at which, at which side, but I'm pretty good with, uh, with catching with two hands. So but I, it's a one-handed catch? No, I'm, I'm good with two <laughs> hands, so I reckon I will, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to take it with one hand. Okay, I wish you the best of luck for your catch. Thank you. And I hope baby dad will take the money then. <laughs> no, I'll take it. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys. <laughs> what a joy and a privilege now to be joined by one of the greatest uh, test cricketers of all time, he holds do you know how many world records this guy holds? I mean, mess, most di uh, dismissals over 500. First guy to reach 500 catches as a wicket keeper. Most dismissals ever. Still holds the world ninth wicket uh, partnership record with Patrick Simcox over 100 consecutive ODIs. 
second fastest ODI history after AB de Villiers and most impressive holds the record for the most buys conceded by a keeper in T20. <laughs> I'm not surprised that he holds that record because he never dropped anything. That's right. So he holds it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Welcome, Mark Boucher. <laughs> Uh, Bouch, uh, what a magnificent career you've had. And considering that actually cricket was never your first love, was it? It was, it was actually, was it rugby? In, well, initially rugby when I was at school. But then um, I started playing a bit of squash and I really enjoyed squash. And I'm actually quite good at it as well. I actually remember that. I remember you as the under 12 champion of the country. Do you remember me? I was in the Western Province under 12 C. I actually don't. I'll be honest with you, I don't. <laughs> but actually, you gave up rugby uh, because of one, one little knee injury was all it took. Is that correct? Um, no. Do you want the truth? Yes. Okay. The truth is... This is a no-holds-barred injury. Yeah. No, I, I sort of gathered that. Yeah. <laughs> I know you don't what swear. Away? I know you don't swear, but you can. No, I know that. I've, I've seen a couple of Dean Elgar's interviews as well, so... <laughs> That's the ghost of Hansi Cornier. Carry on. Um, so, we were... In standard six, and uh, as you do, you get looked after by a couple of the matrix. And we went to uh, a party at school, and we got pulled to the, the back of the school, and they started giving us a bit of in the booze, a bit of bit of brandy oh, and coke. Oh, oh, right. okay. I thought it was going a completely different route. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we had a couple of brandy and cokes in standard six, and uh, then we went back to my my mate's house. Um, and in those days, Guns N' Roses, Sweet Child of Mine, we used go. to go mad, and there were a couple of cricket bats there. And somehow... East London. In East London, yeah. There's not much else to do there. Slummies. Somehow we found ourselves on the roof. And we were headbanging, as you do in those days. And I decided that a stage dive would have been the right call to, to make at that particular time. Um, and I ran and I did the stage dive, but I didn't know that there was a washing line underneath. <laughs> and I managed to hit my elbow on the washing line and yeah it didn't end great for me I had to go for operation um, I had to to this day I still got yeah, steel scars. things in yeah star, scars yeah um, and then I went to my dad and I said to him listen I'd, unfortunately I, I had a bad dive on the field um, <laughs> and I had, something's wrong with my elbow and he said geez it's all swollen we need to take you to the doctor and he took me to the doctor and eventually the doctor said yeah let's see we got to put uh, Steel in here and whatever, he did that, and that was the end of my squash career, really. We had uh, Dean, Dean <laughs> Elgar in last week, and uh, you, uh, you, it seems that there are some amazing post-match stories involving you, and, and one of them involves, the, one of the, at that point, the greatest ODI of all time, the 4-3-8 game, and we'll get back to that later. You smashed the winning runs in that game, you got 250, but, but the real highlight of the, the night was in the Santon Sun. Tell us about passing out in the elevator uh, before Australian Brett Lee saved you. That wasn't Dean that shared that. that it was, was Graham, Graham Smith. Graham, sorry, Biff. That was Graham. It was Biff, your okay. captain. You know you can burn Graham here as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'd, 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 <laughs> no, I am. Um, so, so, yeah, we had a fines meeting after the game. Um, and it's been very well documented that I'm the fines master. Um, so yeah, that came out in a in a various commissions of inquiry. Exactly. As well. Yeah, uh, and anyway, so we had we had fines, and um, I still remember the anti fines came through. So at the end of a fines meeting, because I'm dishing out fines and and even to the coaches and all that type of stuff, there's anti fines as well, which Mori will know about. And then you just nailed the, the fines master. So I was nailed quite quite badly. I still remember Mickey actually Mickey actually coaching on himself as well. <laughs> Mickey or funny. Minky? Mickey, oh, no, Mickey. no, no. Mickey was out the equation at okay. that stage. Mickey Arthur. Sorry. Um, Got a footnote in that, but anyway. Yeah, anyway, so he uh so he got, he got sick of himself, and eventually after that, we said, okay, fine, it's time to go back to the hotel now. And um, we stumbled back to the hotel, and we went downstairs, and Brett Lee, with the, a couple of Australian guys, they all came downstairs, which I thought was very nice of them as well. I mean, they've, they were part of a, a great game of cricket, and a yeah. good series. I, I must remember that that was the end of the series as well. Yes. And he brought his guitar down, and he was playing Brett on his Lee guitar. On guitar? Oh, yeah. he's, oh. Actually, he's, he's very good. Really? Huh? He's got very, nothing very going good, for yeah. him. We bowled 150, a lot of money. Was a beautiful man and could sing. He had nothing going for that. I wouldn't have said the beautiful man part, but yeah, the rest, I agree yeah, with We yeah, have, yeah. all have different types. Right? Changing. Exactly. Um, so <coughs> he was playing guitar on that, and eventually, you know, we start, the alcohol starts to take effect. Um, and I decide to, 
that that's my my bundle and i want to go back up to my room which is on the 17th floor which is quite responsible respectable and, responsible yes, decision yes. yeah and i get into the lift and um it's it's quite a it's quite an eerie lift because you can see the whole the yes. whole way it's a complete glass and i get in and someone must have messed ice on the floor and i try and i just maybe my foot slips a bit and <laughs> at that stage I, I was lying on the floor and i felt like you know it's it seems like a good place to just have a quick little nap Little did I know that at the bottom, where all the Aussies were and all the South African cricketers were as well, um, the lift was just going up and down for about 15, 20 minutes. And they were all laughing at me because I could see, and I was like the, that guy of the evening, you know, <laughs> the yellow jersey, if you want to call it. Um, and Brett was the nice guy to say, listen, you know, we can't let this poor guy go up yeah. and down in the lift like that. So he came to the lift and... Um, but he waited for his set to finish. Yes, his yeah. set finished. Uh, <laughs> uncle, <laughs> so, uncle. So the reason why I don't like the beautiful man, because I don't want to say one day that the, a beautiful man took me to bed. Yes. <laughs> Did he carry you? He, t or? he carried me to bed, yes. He put Did me you? in bed and then he left and he went downstairs and carried on with his set. Do you remember that being a little bit emasculating or don't you remember anything? No, I don't all? remember much about yeah. that. I remember waking up in the morning, I could walk properly, so I, I was okay with yeah. that. Yeah. I want to I wanna, I wanna come back to your 438 game. Because like everything that you guys are, are sharing about the the euphoria, the adrenaline, the I can remember watching that game, and I mean watching it, you know, I, I mean I was on such a I wanted to flip and go out and and celebrate and and have a hell of a time. So for you as a player, Bouch, hitting the winning run, I mean, well, there's this great story of of Cullis. Mm. After after the first innings, and he comes in and says, "Well, okay, at least the bowlers did their part." Yeah. Like you, you're kind of saying, "Well, you know, we don't we don't have much of a chance here, but we'll have it. We'll give it a, a good old crack." So then, making it, the the party just escalates post game. Yeah, look, I, it was an incredible day, um, and I'll be very honest with you. We got smashed to all parts. Yeah. And Ricky Ponting, what, what is always nice is that as, as a wicketkeeper, you get to, that's the front seat of a, of a yeah. batter. And I, it's still one of the better innings that I've ever seen. Um, so halfway, I mean, myself and Herschel looked at each other, I think. Herbal. Uh, Herbal. Hang on. Yeah. Herbal. 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 straight to this stage. Yeah, no, he could see straight. I think he had sobered up at that stage. Um, <laughs> Too after about 30 point. overs, and usually after 30 <laughs> overs, you sort of can double the score. And, and uh, he said to me, they're going to get 400 years. So I said, Hirsch, they're going to get more than 400 years. So I think Hershey already had set his mindset that he is going to have to have an incredible game mm. of cricket like from, with a bat. And he did. But yeah, we walked in after half time there, 4-3-4. Four, four. Um, a lot of people started leaving the game. I remember that. People just, you know, stuff yeah. this, we out of here. And uh, we got into change room and, and Jacques just looked at everyone and he said, guys, this here, keep our heads up. Our bowlers have done the job here. I think they're 20 short. <laughs> And it was a perfect thing that he said because just everyone was sort of laughing yeah. and it was like, okay, guys, you know, <laughs> what are the chances of us actually winning this game? It's like maybe 0.1% chance. Uh, and then Butter got out first and we were like, oh, you know. It's, he won the game for you. I went to the crease and honestly, I, I couldn't hit the ball. I was edging everything. I was very jammy. I think I, there was an LBW shot of um, Clark, probably out. If they'd had the DRS at that stage yeah, I'd, on my bike. But I managed to stick around to the end there, and the guys that came in around me played unbelievable innings as well. Although short, but they were what was necessary. We won the game. I never forget Makaya running to me, and you know myself and Makaya had a good relationship, and because we had been brought up together, so it was almost like everything was was there. I remember walking past a guy, and he was in tears. And at that stage, you don't quite know yeah. how big it's going to get. Um, then the fans meeting happened. The next day, waking up, not even packing your bags, just leaving to get on a plane. I mean, it was a mess after that for a while. I think only like three or four days afterwards, you realize, okay, geez, this is what we've actually done. We've won the series as well. And then the DVD comes through. And then listening to the DVD, I think it's Kurti Krivia, who had a go at myself and Jacques at one stage. He says, now these guys are costing the game. Well, how, do you, how does he know what's costing the game? Kurti Grove. Who's ever <laughs> chased down 434? Yeah. Uh, there's no manual to, put, to chase down 434 at that stage. Maybe now it's getting there, but yeah, it was an was incredible day of cricket and one that will forever be there in the, in the memory books. So the thing for me is just to see the smile on people's faces around the ground in the DVD as well. It's very nice to say that I can add to, to making a couple of people in this country very happy like yeah. you guys in the rugby have done in the World Cup. No, that was, that was phenomenal. That, but you, you kind of felt like a World Cup being won after that game. Yeah. That was incredible. And the, the sweetness of victory against Australia is kind of incomparable, right? 
Yeah. It's like the All Blacks, South yeah. Africa. Uh, Tell us about some of those, I mean, some of those series wins in Australia and, and, and some of the celebrations uh, that come to mind, some of your Australian highlights, post-game in particular. Well, in, initially there weren't many <laughs> because yeah. we didn't win too many uh, up front in my career. But the, the big ones that we did win was the, the first Test match series there. I mean, that was spectacular. JP played an unbelievable knock. Um, the way that you know, the, the guys were, were in a great space as a team. Um, you know, we'd come off a, a great series win in England as well, so we wanted to try to do the double, if you want to call it that. Uh, and the celebrations were, were massive after that as well. Um, I remember I had to do a couple of laps around the, the casino in, in Melbourne huh. because they wouldn't, let, they wouldn't let two or three of us in. Once again, the anti fans killed us. It always did. Um, so we actually had to do, we got to this nightclub. I think it's close to the Crown or something like that. Yeah, the Crown and, uh, in Melbourne. Yeah, we went, we went in there and the, the bouncer said to us, no, no, no. And we said, guys, we've just won a series against Australia. You know, we've cordoned off a section there for us. And he said, no, you need to do a couple of laps. Do you so know who I am? Did you say that? No, no, okay. not at all. I don't, think, I don't think those Aussie really care. <laughs> but there were three or four of us that had to do a couple of laps and then went in and yeah, snuck a few drinks in. But was Australia the best place to tour? Um, it, it was a nice place to tour. It was nice Where golf was your, your favourite place to tour? I Car love, Caribbean. Uh, Caribbean for me, I mean, it's a great place to tour as well, but on long tours like we used to have, um, it does get a bit much. The yeah. beaches are start to get a bit monotonous. So... I, I enjoyed England. England, for me, we were always together. There's not many flights. You're always on a coach together. So you get to play games, get to know quite a few of the guys. You get more personal with them. Um, and it's a nice place to cricket. I mean, there's a nice, nice place to play cricket. There's no, nothing better than beating the English in their home conditions. It's very tough to do. Yeah. But when you win a test match there, like Lords <coughs> or something like that, that's proper. Oh. Let, let, let's be honest, sorry, Murray, the, <coughs> you know, if I compare your tours to, to the rugby tours, you know, the countries that you go to versus the countries that we go to, um, it's a little bit different mm. in terms of that experience. And also, you guys go for three months. months. Three months, yeah. You know, we go four-week tour max, and, and you can, you know, you can sweat it out in the UK or Ireland or Australia or New yeah. Zealand. You Why don't you mention Argentina there? Argentina? Because your mate Skulk always tells me if there's one tour that you want to go on, it's Argentina. It's Argentina. And it's Argentina. not for the meat. <laughs> this is a great story, actually, not to mention. I think it was a Marty's team that toured Argentina. And, uh, and they wanted to, as you do, like on the off day, so they now have to go get their own meal. But they, and they wanted to go to Burger King. So now there's one, like one of the four. So he goes, he stops and he says, uh, yeah, you know, when you get in a different country, then you speak English, but you speak in their <laughs> accent. And he goes, uh, where is uh, uh, Burger King? <laughs> Burger, Burger King. <laughs> he goes, Burger, and he goes, oh, Burger King, you want to go to Burger King? And, they, and he sent him there. Um, I'm going with Skull Burger. I'm coming. He is They're the Russia. Burger King. In Russia. He's the bur he is the Burger no. King. So we asked Graham the same question. Which one meant more to you? The one in England or the one in Australia? Because... Obviously, you got injured to become world number one, so you weren't actually part of the game. But obviously, the emotion around the injury and all of that with the iron and, and missing the test matches, which would have gotten you to 150. Yeah, well, that, that was the second, the second series I wasn't yeah. part. But the first one I was actually part of. Uh, that's where Graham got that, that mm. number yeah, 100 in, yes. in, in uh, Birmingham. Um, that was, yeah, it was as big as Australia. I think there were a couple of scars from Australia. And that's, that's the amazing thing. I mean, people in the media say, yeah, oh, there's no scars. And... But there are scores that that, mm. that past sort of generation carried into into that particular series, and I, I remember like a guy like Abi de Villiers, and this is how youngsters can have a big influence in team environment as well. He came up to us and he said, "Listen, boys, we're going to win this game," and we we're like, "Yeah, we've been in this situation before, but we've lost." But the belief that we could see coming out of his body language because he hasn't been because there. he hasn't been yeah. there, he hasn't had the scores, mm. it was massive for us. And and a guy like Dale Stein, you know, he's just like, "Give me the ball." Give me the ball, I'm going to win you this game. And to have those youngsters, and then you start feeding off that, and you go like, hey, you know what? Mm. I need to actually catch a wake-up here. Because I'm bringing the from the pasture that these yeah. guys, does, they don't deserve to have that. It's a, the naivety of, of the youth that yeah. sometimes makes And that helped us. Yeah. that helped us in both those series, there's no doubt. Hold on, this is a question we actually got via Facebook from Henry Morris that says, when you travel, Christopher, it's never a good idea to leave your laptop open. Do you have any laptop-related stories for Christopher Henry? 
zero three. Oh, they, they just realized. I okay. just realized, yes. <laughs> okay, that wasn't in any casino or anything like that. that was... Should you be watching porn on a flight anyway? <laughs> no, it's not. It's got nothing to do with porn or anything okay. like that. It was on a tour in the West Indies and I had a girlfriend that was over and she came to surprise me. And a couple of my, my mates had known about the surprise. And I got into the room after a training session and I saw pink bags there and I was like, am I in the right room? But my room key opened this door, so I must be in the right room, yeah? Has Jacques bought himself a new set Yeah, and then I walk the around the corner and she's sitting on the bed with my computer open. <gasps> and I was like, okay, hi, very nice to see you and surprise. And she wasn't all Happy. that impressed. Yeah, so back in those days, you know, back in those days, we were young and dumb and we did some stupid stuff and that's when Facebook was all there and you invite a couple of people here and there just, you know, yeah. throw a couple of kites out, see what's happening. <laughs> um, yeah, those kites were, were cut off pretty badly for me um, and I had to face the... Well, I think, of it. Like, you don't fly a kite in a like... Yeah, this. yeah, but I actually went to Jacques afterwards and Graham and I said, boys, you, you can't, you've got to tell me if you, know, yeah. if you know that there's a surprise because it, it was a hell of a surprise. <laughs> yeah. but, it's a long um, way to fly. Yeah, um, you know, you, but those are the days, as I said, that was... Chris Morris, is there something about cricket more than other sports that encourages infidelity as well as <laughs> alcoholism? <laughs> <laughs> no, because I think we're not as well built as the rugby players. Um, so I've heard, I've heard strong rumours that rugby players are... They swing it to the wing quite often. They keep it in-house though. Correct. Right. They keep it in-house. So, you know, as cricket as we... We go I just need to finish the chip and then I'll reply, <laughs> respond to that. Talk to us a little bit about this team in uh, New Zealand that we're taking. That is always going to be the window period and this is always a window period that this competition needs to take place in. To get the best players in the world and also allow the best South African players to be in it as well. It's no use having your own home competition but not having your best players involved. So that is here to stay and it, it is something that is needed in this country. Um, it's basically revitalized the whole game of cricket in our country. I don't see it as acceptable that we're sending a second or third string team over to play a test match. Um, I'm maybe a little bit old school. I understand the difficulties behind it, but it still doesn't sit well with me. And it's no fault of the players. There are still players there that are going to do well. I, no, don't get me wrong, and, it's, and they must see it as an opportunity. But test match cricket, in my opinion, is you play your best team your best team to go represent your country and we know that that's not the best team. We can't hide from that. Yeah. And I just think that there should have been a little bit more foresight in the planning of, because we knew that this is going to be the window period a year or two ago. We see a lot of English players playing in, in this year's edition. Yeah. England's touring next year at the same time of Ooh. the Betway SA20 Ooh. and quite a few other teams as well. Access to proper players next year, do you, th do you see that as a as a problem? Uh, yes and no. I think that depending what, what formats, do you know what formats is? Or two? I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's, it it's be, actually... It would, it would be test. Yeah. But so remember, it, last it's year test, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of specialist white ball cricketers that are, are playing in all the leagues in any case. So uh, you might lose one or two players. I don't see it being a major problem. I think because of the, the standard of... Thank you. Because of the standard of cricket that's come out of this and the, 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 the RPL owners that are involved, they will find a way to get the best players in the world coming and playing in, in this competition. So I don't think that that's a, a major threat. Oh, but remember last year, England were yeah, playing in a white ball series. And yeah. remember there was a week break in the middle of the Betway. Yeah, but it's easier when they're playing, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, no, but that's... But if they're playing in yeah. India or no, whatever. That's, that's yeah. fair, but yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of India, you're preparing for the IPL, head coach of Mumbai Indians. When you arrive in oh, the Kachi. subcontinent... Kachi. Apparently you have uh, uh, a ritual that you undertake every time you land in the subcontinent. Can you tell us what that is? Yeah, so we, we basically go teach our asses a lesson, <laughs> to put it nicely. So I think teach the one- your ass, you Teach your ass, your ass, ass a lesson. Teach your ass a lesson. Yes. It's something that we came up with um, when one of our first tours to India, where a lot of the guys when got- When you sick. say we, myself, give us names. Myself and Jacques, Graham, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's quite a few, quite a okay. few of the guys. <laughs> and basically, when you arrive there, everyone talks to you about don't drink the water, don't eat salad. Ice. Ice. Don't open your mouth, don't brush your, in the, in the shower, don't brush your teeth with the water, all that type of stuff. Look, it's got a lot better now because the hotels have all, they distill their water in it. But 
It's Bounces something, in 9 to 1 with Tom Ross. Yeah, it's something that you have to be aware, aware of. And um, we just decided that, right, we're going to go head, head first, and we're going to go and get, a, get the hottest curry and tell the guy to spice it up. So you basically shock your system. Okay. <laughs> and you, you, you hit that toilet first up, um, straight away on day two, and then you're in the tour. Then yeah, you know, this yeah. is as bad as it's going to get. Because he normally <laughs> waits for the last day. You go day one. No, we go day one. <laughs> and <laughs> another thing that, which I don't know if you, you know, remember Rob Fleming. Yeah. From SAB. SAB. And uh, we, we are adamant that there's something in beer that kills off germs in, in India. This is... All the, the glycerine. All the, all the beer That's drinkers... That's where it All the beer drinkers never used to get sick. All the guys who didn't drink, they always got sick. It's the glycerine. It's the same stuff that gives you a hangover because it, the glycerine in the beer keeps it fresher for longer so they can store it longer. I learned this from the Aussies. Okay. You get half a glass of water, you take your beer, you pour it upside down and you can actually see the glycerine pouring out like syrup. And then you take it out and you drink your beer and you don't get a hangover the next morning. It's not I thought beer. it was only about Casa Lager. Obviously they were our sponsor. I mean, Casa Lager is sponsor uh, Betway now as well. Yeah. Uh, the SA20. And for me, it's, it was always something that we, we made a point. Of doing. Of doing. Just having a not couple of beers. Just a couple of beers yeah. here and there just to keep the, the immune system alone. nice and high. Yeah. Go and, lift, and there take was never the any lift. problem. I remember Butter Dippin' as well. I mean, he never used to drink. He's the first guy down all the time. Yeah. yeah bellies, yeah, and uh, sick and this, that, and like, dips, have a beer. Yeah. He's like, no, I can't have a beer. I'm like, okay, well then, right. suffer. Suffer. Let's talk about Jasprit. Jasprit Bumra. You manage him. Boom, boom. I, I don't actually. I'll tell you, you why. I'm, I'm looking forward to doing it. Because he was injured last year. Uh, so he wasn't really in our squad. I mean, I saw him once or twice at Nets and that, but he was, uh, he was undergoing back surgery and recovering from that. So we actually didn't have him a part of our squad last year. So him coming back definitely strengthens us in a big way. So I'm really looking forward to, to working with him. He's always been someone that I've, I've looked at and I've gone, this, this guy knows what he's doing. He's, he's very smart, apparently. Uh, good team man as well. So yeah, I think... Um, that's one relationship that I'm looking forward to. That's what I love about the IPL. And I think Betway SA20 is getting it right as well. So in my mind, Jasper Boomra, we, we can't play him. South yeah. African batsman can't play him. New ball, Boomra, we can't play him. Now you get Gerald could see a bowling with that guy during an mm -hmm. mm -hmm. IPL. He's going to learn a lot. Imagine how, how, yeah. you know, what he's going to come back with. Not just the experience of IPL, but just spending time with that oak and getting into his mind. Pandya, same thing. Yeah. That, that's what I love about the, you know, pay them as much as possible, but they come back and they bring that value back to South Africa. But hopefully see, we can But even on, like on the field performances, like for me, like you mentioned DSG, the Durban's Super Giants, they've got those two Afghanistani players Oof, who are good. unbelievable. That Noor, Noor yeah. that left mm. arm So he was in my T10 side. He is un... We can't pick him. And a hell all, of a kid as well. All it can do is help South African batters. Yeah. I'm looking at a very selfish and jealous... Oh, selfish and angle here is that it kind of helps South African batters because yeah. he, I mean, he did Dave Miller for a kipper in that first yeah. game. He five dot balls and the last ball was a googly and cleaned him up. And you're going, that's a guy who's played almost 150 one day, one day for South Africa. Like, mm. So it's going to be, it's, it's only going to help our cricket. Do you think Davy Miller can ever play test match cricket? He should have at one stage in my opinion. I think opinion. he should have. You know, I, yeah, he should have. So Dave, Dave actually, he stayed over at my house the one night. This was a while ago. It's probably like... Ten years ago, did you see him naked? No, I didn't see him naked. He was <laughs> staying in. That's a surprise. The he, was in my, he was staying in my spare room, and um, I think he was looking for a towel. And he opened up uh, my spare room, and there was all my old whites. <laughs> and he came through, and he was like, "Yeah, I saw all your whites." He said, "That's my dream one day, to play there." One <laughs> player you didn't get on auction, you wished you had this season in the IPL. One player I didn't get. Yeah. <laughs> while you think, while you think, because you said egg fog, did you guys see that thing of, of uh, Jurgen Klopp? Uh -oh. Where he was doing an interview, like, um, with all the press there, and then, and then he says, brain <laughs> <laughs> And then he says, like, why can everyone say it, but I can't say it? <laughs> they said, no, it's brain fog. Brain <laughs> fog. <laughs> <laughs> and they go, Oh, oh, okay. Oh, oh, what does that mean? <laughs> oh, one player in India you'd really yeah, like current, to have. Current player. You know, Rashid Khan. Rashid Khan. I'd really like to have him. Mm. Nice. He's just, he's, yeah, I mean, he's the epitome of, of your modern day T20 cricketer. Mm. 
he's like a go-to man of the ball. If you're in a sticky situation, you throw the ball to him, he's like a Shane Warne. He'll win you a game from nowhere. And then with the bats, I mean, yes, he can oh. just go out there and win it. We're going to take a short break, uh, <laughs> grab a drink or whatever you want to grab. Grab Don't a, a semi and come back with more great stories. Uh, and in the meantime, another edition of Fans in the Stands. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Who are you betting to win today? Obviously, Pittsburgh Capitals. All the way, because like, they need to win so that they can get those points to get to qualify to the next round. So I'm, I'm going to put it like, okay. on them, yeah. And leading wicket taker? Hmm. Rabada, maybe today. Rabada? Yeah. He hasn't performed well. Yeah, but then this, like, he knows this wicket, hey? He's pretty good when it comes to Centurion. He's been taking wickets when it comes to Centurion, so I think he might be a top wicket taker on, on, this, on this wicket. Good analysis. Now, moving away from cricket. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you had to order a takeout to impress a girl, which takeout are you ordering? Yo! <laughs> when it comes to women, I don't know that much. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> You're expert in cricket, but not women. Uh, when it comes to women, I don't know that much, trust me. <laughs> well, I wish you luck with the cricket. Things, yeah. <laughs> Cheers, thank you so much, man. Yeah, sure, no problem. <laughs> sure, thank you. So if you had to choose one bat in the SA20, who would you choose to bat for your life? Bat for my life? Oh, Henry Klassen at the moment. Why do you say that? What particular game has made him stand out for you? I mean, almost every game this uh, SA20, he's been phenomenal. He's been murdering the bowlers. How are you feeling today? Very positive. I'm backing uh, the Pretoria Capitals, but my favorite team, the MI Cape Town. So it's a bit of a toss-up today for you. Yeah. Who would be your leading run scorer today if you had to choose one? Dewalt Breves. You confident he's going to get highest run scorer? Very positive. And Van Adissen, he's not going to be up there, not going to have a comp like, compete with him? He will give him a chance, he'll give him a run-up, but I think Devot Brevis has it in the bag. Well, that's it for today's show. Make sure you get some of those bets on, and we'll see you guys in a couple of days for those playoffs coming up. Uh, let's talk about sledging, such, a, such an important part of the game. There's a video, I haven't actually seen it till today, 1.8 million views of you sledging a Zimbabwean. To tender, to tender, tender, tender table. table. To tender table, yeah, it was captain um, pilot one stage, yeah. Keep I mean, not the most creative chirps I've heard. What are, what are some of the best sledges you've given and received? Shaib Malak. Shaib Malak in Pakistan. Um, I got called into the match referee's room. Uh, and the match referee said, listen, you've been... The, the Shaib's accused you of name-calling, all that type of stuff. So I sat there and Shaib was a youngster at that stage. And I said to the match referee, um, I didn't call him a thing. And he said, no, no, he called you I I never call anyone a If I don't like you, I'm going to call you something a lot worse than a So I, I said to him, but I didn't call you a And then the match referee just said, listen, Mark, you can go. Your record is clean. You've never been in trouble before. And then he, he stood outside. I stood outside for about 10 minutes waiting for Shab Malak. And nice. the match referee had a full go at him and said, how dare you bring in... A senior play uh, accusing him of calling you a this and that, which is not that bad in any case. You know, dry your eyes and get out. And when he walked past me, <laughs> then I had him by myself. And then I gave him a full rev. And then the rest of the series got what did, quite How ugly. did you rev him? Oh, you well, I, then I called him You said, listen, <laughs> But then listen after, the after that, then the whole series just really got like really messy. Um, but I knew that I was under his skin straight away. Best ledges you guys have ever heard? Oh, jeez, I've got one, and it is an absolute beauty. I've heard two, but I'll save another one for that in a different episode. Tamba Bavuma was batting against New Zealand, and Neil Wagner, or Neil Wagner, was yes. steaming and in at Centurion. And AB and Faf were both injured. Afis, Afis boy. Afis boy, and two Afis boys weren't playing. And uh, Tamba was in the test right, fighting it out to Wagner, and Wags, as they call him, used to bowl a lot of bounces, and very passionate of a cons man. And Wags. Every single time he... Played a missile, Timber had a duck, you'd say, hey Timber, AB's back the next test, but what are you gonna do? Hey, Timber, what are you gonna do? And he'd get back and bowl another ball and say, hey, what are you gonna do, Timber? Hey, what are you gonna do? AB's back the next test, you're not gonna get runs, what are you gonna do then? Eventually Timber had had enough and he ducked one and he'd walked down the wicket and looked him straight in his eyes and gone, I'll just move to New Zealand, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the end of that. <laughs> yes, that was beautiful. Timber. Beautiful, beautiful. Yes. Mark Boucher, <coughs> you were set to retire 
at the end of the 2012 season and then of course this freak accident happens in was it Taunton mm. um, tell us about what you remember the immediate aftermath the emotional spaces you went through yeah it was it was tough um, I remember immediately I knew that there was something that was wrong because it just went black out in my eye so and for those Jacques was that slip yeah and so the, the ball came through from Imran to here. I had glasses on my head because it started to spit a bit. And Emi was just bowling one or two others to change ends with Dale. So he wasn't, I usually had, would wear a helmet, but I wasn't wearing a helmet at that stage. It started to drizzle a bit, so my glasses were on my head. Then Emi bowled um, a googly, and it went straight through the gate, hit the, the top of the bale. The bale spun back and went straight in the eye. And straight away, I mean, I had white gloves on, it went like this. Right. And I remember pulling back, and I could see absolutely nothing. I could see something in my, the middle of my glove, which later found out that it was my pupil. Okay, and Jacques was at slip, like he usually does, just hands on, on knees. He like looks at me, he's come, get up, get up, let's get on to the game. And then AB, AB comes running in from cover, and then AB, as I saw AB, AB looked at me and he's like, oh, no, and that's when I knew. It's like someone shot me, and I just dropped to my knees. And then I couldn't walk off the field. I don't know why, I don't know, I don't know what, how that happens. I mean, I hurt my eye, not my knees, but I couldn't walk off the field. Were you nauseous? How about, ah, yeah, I was nauseous. I, I don't know. It was a very funny feeling. But anyway, so got to the hospital. Wayne Bentley, um, who was our manager at that stage, he took me to hospital. Um, Doc Musaji was there as well. And the guy that I actually saw in, in, the, in the surgery there, he was a guy from East London. Small world. So he came up to me and he said to me, Mark, listen, you've, you've done a proper job here. So I said to him, Doc, listen, just, just fix me up because I've got a series to get to you. I need to, I need to play in the first test. And he just said to me, I don't think that you're going to play another game of cricket ever again. And then I was like, what? And he said, no, there's, I don't think you're ever going to get your eyesight back. If anything, we're just going to try to save your eye at this stage. Um, otherwise, we're going to have to put a marble in. So I was like, oh, okay. Then I was in my room alone, and funny enough, before the tour, Gary Kirsten, who was our coach at that stage, he took us to Switzerland with Mark Horn. I don't know why, if it's maybe that I enjoy a couple of dops and whatever, but every night I was sitting with Mark Horn and going through a couple of his stories. And Mark Horn is this unbelievable explorer, and he, I mean, he's been attacked by polar bears, he's circumnavigated the, the world and all that type of stuff. So he's got unbelievable stories. And all of a sudden, those stories started coming back to me. I said, listen, I'm going to be okay. If Mark can get through that, then I'm going to be okay. And with, without you know, getting too emotional about the whole thing, I was like, okay, cool. It's just Paddy, Paddy Upton, uh, after the operation, I think the operation was like 10 hours or something like that. Paddy Upton came up to me and he said, listen, you know, we've heard the story. And obviously, they've, you've got to go back to Cape Town to have your major surgery again. But um, now would be a good time to maybe just let that off your, get that off your shoulders. Thank you. And I announced my retirement. <coughs> the, the guys were all great. They all came to see me and that and got into a plane. I can't remember much of the plane because I was still pretty drowsy. Mm. Doc Musaji, which I'll ever, forever be grateful to as well, he flew back with me to Cape Town. He dropped me off here at uh, Cape Town International with my parents. And then I went straight to the, the hospital and I had another 14 hour surgery. Sure. Jeez. Jeez. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and then it just w went on. But I mean, you know, the one, thing about, the one thing about it is that I'll never forget when I was lying after my operation, there was a little kid lying next to me. A little kid who's maybe 14 as well, it also just lost eyesight. Um, and then there was another bed next to me where guys both, he had got some acid in his eyes and he didn't have any eyesight. So like you always think that like, yeah, I'm so hard done by, but then Perspective. there's always someone else who's in a worse situation that, than what you are. And I've, I'm fine now, I play my golf, I run a bit, do my cycling, I'm still able to coach. Any shooting? No, I don't shoot. Because that's... No, I don't shoot. I don't <laughs> shoot. People often, often say to me, so how's your eyesight? And I look at John and say, you know, I can still see his a <laughs> <laughs> He is, because he just used the word perspective as well, which I thought was... Hey, you can see how it's fat, Yeah, that's, it's, all, it's all done now. And I'm, I'm good. So you turned to coaching and you've been incredibly successful. Five trophies in three seasons for the Titans before becoming Proteus coach and did you want to remain as head coach of the Proteus? Yes, I did. Um, 
I was given the opportunity to coach uh, MR Cape Town. And at that stage, um, I felt that I, I, all the players were playing in the, in the competition. Um, so CSA had, had, had created a window of opportunity for this whole competition to go through. And I wanted to coach because it was good money. Now the IPL owners are coming in and giving, giving money and all that type of stuff. So I felt, well, if the players and CSA, everyone's benefiting, why can't the coaches benefit as well? And they said, it's not in your contract. I had a conversation with them and they said, no, sorry, we're not going to change. So I said, okay, cool. And then after that, um, then the owners of Mumbai Indians came to me and said to me, listen, uh, we would like you to take the job, um, the main job, which is at, uh, Mumbai Indians. And at that stage, I just kept nice and quiet about it. Um, I still wanted to, to be a part of it because I still felt like I had a bit of unfinished business, in, especially in one day cricket. Um, I thought that we got pretty close in the T20s in the, in the, in the World Cup and also in Abu Dhabi and Dubai. Um, yeah, we, we lost against Holland, which wasn't great. But yeah, I mean, I, but anyway, it is, it is what it is. It's, um, that chapter's done now. All right, quick fire. <laughs> quick fire round, Mark Voucher. One word answers only. I'll give you two words at most. Best bowler you've ever faced? Shane Warne. Worst you've faced? You could say Kevin Peterson. <laughs> Good. Worst, and this might be the same person. Worst behaved teammate ever? Herschel Gibbs. Uh, Best teammate on the Joel? A.B. De Villiers. <laughs> Incredible. It's got three from three. It's three out of three. three. It's three out of three. Three, three from three. Hundred percent record. Yeah, but no, you know why though? No, A.B., why? yeah. Because what you see A.B. on TV, it's not him. <laughs> it's not him, is it? It's not him. It's three from Close three. Close the door, draw the curtains, and you get a different beast that three comes Three from out. three. <laughs> <laughs> Messiest night out of your career? Sashas preseason. I'm just joking. 4-3-8. Uh, mm. Mm. Yeah, I'll go 438. Well, that's all we have time for with the legend, the goat of wicket keepers, Mark Verden Boucher. It's been an absolute privilege having you on Banter with the Boys. And uh, before we go to Betty's Best Bets, let's have a word from our construction sponsors. You constructed that nicely. Welcome back to Betty's Best Bets. I'm Amy Fuso. And once again, here are my best bets for this week.